Good, good, afternoon. good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome all y'all for coming out today here to Thelonious S. Monk Park to celebrate the 100th birthday of the native son here, Thelonious Sphere Monk. I'm glad everybody could, could come. My name is James Wren. I'm the Vice President of the Phoenix Historical Society, African American History of Edgecombe County. And uh, I want to also uh, recognize our President, Mavis Stith, President of the Phoenix Historical Society, all the members. And we're going to open um, the um, Thelonious Monk mother uh, or grandmother Georgiana from Edgecombe County on the born on the Bats farm where enslaved African Americans created the, Af the Bats Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in 1851. Very historic uh, community of people there and the church is still surviving. Even survived Hurricane Floyd then last year, Hurricane Matthew, and just back in there building, I think it was last month or month before. So we want to uh, recognize this connection to the Thelonious Monk's origins in Edgecombe County. And want to uh, bring forward Deacon Eric Gray of the Bats Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Tarver, North Carolina, for the invocation. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, Lord, we want to thank you for the life and legacy of Thelonious Monk. And Lord, we want to thank you for everything that has taken place. And Lord, we know that you have a divine direction upon everything that has happened. And Lord, we come today to give you the praise. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one on the side of my voice. Bless us one by one, then bless us all together. Oh, Heavenly Father, we realize that we can't make it without you. And everything that, that has been accomplished has been done through you. Because of your grace and because of your mercy, we want to tell you, thank you, Lord, for just being God and God right by yourself. Oh, Heavenly Father, remember all of us. Remember all of his ancestors, all the legacies, all those who have known him. Lord, let it continue to seek deep down in our hearts, Lord, that we may give you the praise for what you have done for us in our lives. And we come today to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Lord, bless the cause, O Heavenly Father. Yes. Bless everything that you put your hands on. Yes. Well, O Heavenly Father, you can do anything but fail. Yes. And Lord, we come standing and leaning and depending on you. Yes. Lord, thank you for this day. Yes. Continue to give us the day and things we are in need of. Bless this service. Bless this program. O Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us and put, let us continue to lean on you because all our heavy strength comes from you. And for that, we want to tell you thank you. Bless us right now as we stand before you in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And, and Thelonious Monk chose as his middle name Sphere in honor of his grandfather Spear Bats, who was a farm worker and a noted fiddle player in the Deep Creek and Kenita area in eastern Edgecombe County. Another one of his roots here in Edgecombe County. He, uh, Next, we'd like to bring forward, uh, for the welcoming purpose, the elder statesman of the Phoenix Historic Society, World War II, Montford Marine Point veteran, Mr. Clarence Powell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Even though it's overcast, a little cloudy, it is still a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> As my Vice President introduced me as Clarence Powell, and I'm not from Rocky Mount. You would think that on this momentous occasion, which the catchphrase of what we're doing here today is encapsulated when Thelonious Monk appeared at the, the in Raleigh, and he performed at the Frogger nightclub when he told the audience, I'm from Rocky Mount. So now you have someone who cannot say he's from Rocky Mount. But, <laughs> but I've got permission from the Phoenix, House, the Phoenix Historical Society and the committee that sponsored this momentous 
celebration that I could speak on their behalf. Amen. I come with bona fide reason why I can speak, though I'm not from Rocky Mount. When I was growing up in Martin County and Washington County, I knew that my grandfather was born on a slave plantation in Edgecombe County. His father went off to fight in the Civil War. After the Civil War was over, we never heard any more from my great-grandfather. But my grandfather migrated to Washington, Beaufort, and Martin counties. Now, my, on, on their behalf and behalf of my sainted mother, Lena, Letha, Burnett, Shepard, Powell, who sent seven sons into military to serve and support of our democracy. And in the, during the time of World War II, in 1944 and 45, in the small town of Roper, North Carolina, where she would go into the drugstore to buy a comb of ice cream. She could not lick it in the store. While they were serving German prisoners of war, sitting down and being served. But to honor her, I'll tell you today that she said to us then, be not dismayed, because there's a place called Rocky Mountain. And there's a place called Douglas Block that you have a relative there who have a drugstore. You know, and so that gives me bona fide to say that I could say I'm from Rocky Mountain. <laughs> Then there's another reason. There's another reason why I can say that we all are from Rocky Mountain. We hear the, the storm clouds that are rising now. And you know that Russia's name is pertinent. You know that in October, when Thelonious Monk gave, when the world gave Thelonious Monk to us, that was in October, the beginning of the Russian Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> now, we are living in a time now where Russia may again be a part of our democracy. Mm -hmm. so, so during World War, after World War II, when John F. Kennedy went to Berlin, when the Russians were trying to to encircle Berlin because Berlin was in East Germany. They were under control of the Russians. And they put a siege around Berlin. And John F. Kennedy, with the backing of all the military and Air Force might that he sent in to help the beleaguered Berliners, he made this statement, today, ich bin ein Berliner which means today that I'm from Berlin. So I say to you today that we all can say, as Thelonious Monk said, I'm from Rocky Mountain. So we all can say that we're from Rocky Mountain. Now that I've got that out of the way, <laughs> it is indeed an honor for me to stand here and invite you to this momentous occasion. Now, another reason why uh, Jim and others, I guess, pervaded on me to be the speaker to invite you here, is that I had the pleasure of having heard Thelonious Monk play. Now, uh, the one uh, jazz aficionado who stated that he had the, the honor and pleasure of being present at the greatest a mass of musical talent ever assembled in one place at one time. That was when he heard a, a solo performance by John Coltrane at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. <laughs> I have a brother who says that I can't go that far, but I can tell you that I heard Thelonious Monk play four notes 
at the Blue Note Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> the loneliest monk, as I remember him, he was above my pay grade. You know, I, I didn't have the, the musical chops to know his greatness, but I knew musicians who, my, my brother went to school with Lou Donaldson. My brother-in-law is a jazz musician who played with Lou Russell. My classmate, father-in-law was Jimmy Washington, who played with Count Basie. So I knew musicians who knew music, which I did. And they let me know the greatness of the loneliest monk. So I can't tell you how great the loneliest monk was, because as I say, I don't have the musical chops to, to that. But, but I'm here to honor that I can tell you I know musicians who knew how great he was. Now, my uh, president of my Phoenix Society has to rein me in all the time because I talk too much and too long. <laughs> but I want to leave you with this song. Not going to sing it. <laughs> in shady green pastures so rich and sweet, God leads his children along. Some on the mountain where sunshine so bright. Some in the valley in the darkness of night. Some through the water, some through the flood. Some through the fire and all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives us a song. In the night season and all the day long. Thank you. Thank you. I want to recognize our, our music by Monk is provided by Daryl Stover poet and cultural story in the African-American Music Trails of East North Carolina. He's also a professor at North Carolina State University, and uh, we thank him for his con very much contribution to uh, this program, as well as from the uh, uh, North Carolina uh, African-American Music Trails, African-American Cultural um, Com Heritage Commission, and North Carolina Arts Council. Thank you. Next. We'll have greetings from uh, Honorable Lamont Wiggins from Ward 3, Rocky Mountain City Council. We are in Ward 3, and uh, he's going to give us greetings. You can ask my fellow council members, Council Member Andre Knight and Council Member Reuben Blackwell to come forward with me. And I do this, and I understand that Council Member Knight is at a different point on the program, but I also, <laughs> number one, want to make sure that I don't forget to recognize anybody. And I want to see, I want everybody to see us standing together as a group because we are proud to be a part of this momentous event. We are proud to be one of the sponsors of this event. And we are proud to be here today. We're here today to recognize one of this city's greats. One of this city's greats that has attained national and international claim, but I'll be the first to say that we have been remiss in giving him the local recognition that he deserves, and that is the Lonious Spear Monk, Spear Spear Monk. And I'm glad that we are here today. Before I even begin to get into his accomplishments, and I think we all know and we are aware of his accomplishments, and if we have any members of the Monk family on behalf of the Marin City Council, of the city of Rocky Mount, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming to this event because in, in years past when we've had events that has been primarily sponsored by the Rocky Mount Edgecombe Community Development Corporation, many members of the Monk family have been here before in the past. So I think that we would be remiss if we from a point of personal and public privilege did not recognize the Monk family. And again, if you're here, Please, you're welcome, and please feel free to come here in your city, your, your city of heritage at any point in time. But when we talk about communities, and I want to start talking about community, in particular, underserved and underrepresented African American communities, and talk about history, because uh, Mr. Powell, I'm from Rocky Mount, been here 51 years, and when I remember the history of this community, when this, his, when this community was the center of the activity not only in this city, but part of the industrial heritage of this city. And when I say the industrial heritage of this city, 
you had the around the Y community, and then when you walked across the railroad track, before that fence was there that is behind me, you walked directly across to the Little Raleigh community, and then you could walk just a few blocks up the road and you were in the South Rocky Mount community. And those were all primarily African American communities. They were well healed African American communities that contributed to the industrial and the railroad history of, of this city and in this area and in this region. And we're beginning to see a reemergence of that. We've had any number of announcements where we're going to see a return of our railroad history and heritage. We are seeing an emerging heritage tourism that is coming into and near this region and in this area, and this is just a part of this. In addition to the marker that will be unveiled today, there's also a marker that is on South Washington Street that recognizes the around the Y community has been there for some period of time. I encourage you all, after this event is over, to read that marker so that you begin to know not only about the heritage and the national and the international contributions of Thelonious Spear Monk, but also the contributions of those who were the former and even the current <coughs> members of the Around the Y community. Again, thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this event. We are proud sponsors of this event, and we will continue to do our all and do our best for you all, this community, and the citizens of the city of Rocky Mount. Thank you so much. And we really, and thank the city of Rocky Mount for its, its uh, generous financial support for this, these activities today. Next, I want to bring up uh, Reverend Wayne Hines, Edgecombe County Commissioners, District 7. We're in District 7, and he could come up, and I don't know if uh, Mr. Wiggins' father is here. Well, he, I also want to thank the Edgecombe County Commissioners and uh, Chairman Leonard Wiggins for their continued support of the Phoenix Star Society and uh, the work that we have been able to do and appreciate it. And, uh, Reverend Hines, I let you give greetings from Edgecombe County. To Mr. Wren and the Phoenix National Society and to all of the ministers and all of the elected officials and to each of you who are gathered, I am delighted and honored to be here. And just knowing that Edgecombe County is still Edgecombe County, and one of my pet peeves I say all the time is I was Edgecombe born, Edgecombe bred. When I die, I will be Edgecombe dead. <laughs> For, for we, have, we have a rich history, uh, not only through Mr. Monk's life, but the rich history of those who have gone before us. But today is a special day, and I, I just told Ms. Diggins that I wished about 50 youth could be here because our children are not developing their musical talents the way they should because music does sometimes what the church can't do, and that is bring people together. But we are here to honor Mr. Mark's life, to the family, and to all of the members of Edgecombe County area. It is delightful to just know that we have a rich history and we have a strong heritage that makes a difference in how we live and what we do in honoring those who have gone before us, laid a foundation for us, and has allowed us the time to put forth the memory that we might gain strength to do the things that we can do. And today we honor Mr. Monk because of the fact that music does to the mind what the word of God does to the soul. It, it just, it just as, as one of my old deacons would say, good music just do something to me. <laughs> and, and I believe today we celebrate because of the life and the love that Mr. Monk had for this area, his pride from being from this area. And today we celebrate him and we remember him, but also we instill in others that this is something that we ought to cherish from the depths of our hearts because music makes the difference. And I say to you today, thank you for the opportunity of being a part of this. Always remember that the best is yet to come. If we can use our memory to gain strength for the days ahead, we know without a doubt, memory, when you have good memory, 
I know I, I know some of us got some timers. We don't have Alzheimer's yet. But 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 when we can remember those things that happened before us and the people who gave their best effort to make life worth living, we can do that by loving each other and caring about each other and remembering those who went before us, laid us a great foundation, and we ought to keep building because people are important. Blessings be upon each of you. I'd now like to bring forward the uh, president and CEO of the Rocky Mount Edgecombe Community Development Corporation, who has put an awful lot of time and energy to make these events today possible, as well as so many other things she has helped make possible here in Edgecombe County and Rocky Mount. And uh, we are we're, we're very, very uh, glad to bring you forward. <laughs> you are you you are a fighter. <laughs> Thank you. George Dickens. Harambe. 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 Peace and blessings to all of you. Um, sitting there, I couldn't really see the whole audience, but I can see it now. And we're very grateful for your coming out today for the erection of this marker. Uh, this is uh, the Rocky Mount Edgecombe CDC uh, has been working to um, make um, the Nullius Monk's name recognized in this community for the last two decades. This uh, weekend celebrates 18 years of uh, concerts that we sponsored for uh, Thelonious Monk, and we're very pleased to do that. We're trying to lift up heritage tourism, cultural tourism in our community as an economic development strategy. I wanted to thank the Phoenix Society today for uh, their work in recognizing local heroes and local people. Uh, I asked um, uh, Sister Stith how many markers had they erected throughout Edgecombe County, and she said this is number six. And so that's wonderful to have a group of people whose mission it is to recognize the, the heroes of our community. And, and, and as I get older, I turn 70 in, um, in June. <laughs> and as I, as I age, I recognize the importance of keeping your memory alive. So it's very important that we keep the memory alive of Thelonious Monk and what he contributed to this world and this culture, and for us to keep other heroes alive. I wanted to um, thank the uh, African American Heritage Commission, the North Carolina Arts Council, the African American Music Trail, the city of Rocky Mount, and, and our committee for all the work that we've done over the past few months to make this happen. Uh, I wanted to also acknowledge to you that this has been a lot of work. I must say that to you, because to come in and sit and you see it and it doesn't really feel like it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of dedication. And so we just want to say thank you for coming out. I know thank you for supporting the activities of this committee and the CDC and all the other partners that's involved. And I really want you to just, anybody you see in a gold shirt, just shake their hand and thank the Phoenix Society for what they do, not only today for Thelonious Monk, who's that last brother y'all recognized? Who are the other five or four people y'all honored? We have them. You can't remember? Yeah, I can't remember. We have a Morgan George Henry White in Tarboro. Right. We have Operation Dixie here over on, near the Imperial Center for the 1946 um, Tobacco Workers Leaf House Organizing Campaign. And we got the Monk Plaza that Lamont mentioned. And then we've got uh, Knights of Labor Marker in Tarboro uh, for the Knights of Labor who organized among African American farm workers in the 1880s. And then we uh, recently went to Little Washington for a marker called African Americans Defend Washington about uh, African Americans uh, refugees from enslavement who were, who were armed to defend Washington from the Confederate siege in 1863. And uh, that was uh, notable. That was a precursor to the U.S. colored troops. And then uh, this latest marker was to the 1834 case of the state versus Will. Will was enslaved on the uh, battle plantation of Walnut Creek out between here and Tarboro. And uh, he. Uh, you want me to tell that story? Yeah, I'll tell the story. 
Well, Will had made a hope. At first, I want to I want to give recognition for this story. We learned the story from uh, Dr. Kelly's former colleague, Dr. Robert Hinton, who was our inspiration so much for our work. He told his story in the beginning of his book, but the politics of agricultural labor. Uh, Will had made a hole with his own hand. And one morning, the slave foreman named Allen wanted, uh, wanted Will to give his hoe to somebody else to work. And Will said, no, I made this hoe, you know, with my own hands. And, you know, of course, people who were in slavery didn't own anything. So, right. But he insisted this was his hoe. That's right. So before I let somebody else use it, I'll break it in two. So he broke it, the hoe in two and walked to the cotton press. And when Allen went to, to uh, tell the overseer, Richard Baxter, the white overseer, he... Uh, he got on his, uh, grabbed his gun, got on his horse, and, and, and went over to the cotton press to confront Will. And Will came down and his hat in his hand. And I don't know what uh, Baxter said to Will, but Will took off running. Baxter shot him in his back with a shotgun. He should have died. No, he did. Will kept running. And, 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 and Baxter and, and, uh, uh, was chasing him down. He ran about a quarter, maybe a half a mile through the woods until finally... Uh, uh, he, he was cornered, and in, in the struggle with Baxter, Will pulled out a knife and, and stabbed Baxter in the arm. He died. He bled to death. He died. Will was convicted of murder in Edgecombe County Court. But the, uh, uh, the slave owner, James Smith Battle, hired a lawyer, went to the Supreme Court in North Carolina. And that case was heard, and the... Uh, Will was uh, exonerated of murder. Good. And, and not received the death sentence. And because of his struggle, that changed just a little bit, not a whole lot, but it, it, it changed a little bit in terms of the right of slaves to, to uh, kill in self defense. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't be murder. So that was uh, what we recognized. And a lot of people have talked about that because they're interested to hear about it, Will and his hope and his, <laughs> his act of resistance right there in 1834. That, uh, that made a little difference, you know. All these things make a little difference and they add up eventually. Okay. Just happy you to understand Edgecombe County's history. Keep your ears open, read your paper, listen out for meetings, encourage your children, and then participate the best you can because I tell you this, if you have a dream, now is the time to implement your dream. So, even, so I say this in honor of Thelonious Monk because he had a mission he carried it out. Now we must carry out our own mission. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're here in the Round the Wild community. And a few things to point out from our research on Phoenix Historic Society, these, this community's connection to Thelonious Monk. Uh, in about, as this community developed from uh, African American workers coming from other counties to work on the railroad. Emerson Shops is to my right, to your left. You can see of the trees, the, some of the buildings of the Emerson Shops, railroad shops. And one such, uh, there was a, a worker named Dan Whitehead, who was a, a railroad worker, a fireman on the railroad. And he was able to purchase a house on the corner of Dunn and Red Road, which stood right behind the people in, in the tent, between here and the, I guess the the light pole somewhere in this was the house on Dunn Street, Dunn and Red Row. Um, in about 1904, he married Eula Monk, who was, and, and about before 1910, Eula's brother Thelonious moved up here from Sampson County, living with them in that house, which became 124 Dunn Street. Well, then uh, Thelonious uh, married Barbara Batts. And they move into a, 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 got a house, rental house right be, to my left here, between here, I guess in the duplex, around that fence, somewhere in that neighborhood here, uh, where we stand, where we are now, is really in the middle of Red Row, I believe. Um, well, the house 815 Green Street was also called Red Row, which is where Thelonious and his older sister Marion were born, but apparently the family, uh, about 1920, moved across the street to a bit bigger house, it was 1814 Green Street, that's where um, the longest younger brother Thomas was born and when his grandmother Georgiana passed away according to the records in the courthouse um, so uh, 
after um, the family moved to New York, at some point Thelonious Sr. came moved back here with his sister here at Dunn Street, and that house then, uh, Mr. White had passed away, went to Eula, and then went on down the line to the Monk family and continued on to, uh, to Pam's parents were the last owners, I believe, of the house on Dunn Street. And that, so it remained, the Monk family had remained in this community all those years uh, to the 1970s. But there's probably, uh, I want to bring up Ruth Bullard, president of Around the Y, who has done probably an awful lot to, uh, to preserve Thelonious Monk's name in 2001, organized a petition to the city council to name this park, rename this park from Dunn Street Park to Thelonious S. Monk Park. And then a few years later, the street on this side of the railroad was South Street. They renamed that street to Monk Street. So you can ride the end of the street, you'll see the sign say Monk Street. And um, she's been a part of all the other efforts uh, which you can elaborate. This is a great, uh, interesting community here and it's great that community keeps its history alive as was referred they put their history their community marker up some years ago and it tells the history of this community and uh without further ado ruth bullard president of around the y good evening i'm not going to hold you long because they tell me i talk too much but before i um get started i want all the i didn't a president never do it by himself. There's always somebody, members that is helping him and pushing him. But anyway, all the members of the Round the Y, or people who live around the Y that come to the meeting sometime, but all the members stand up so everybody can see it. This, these are just some of them. We have a meeting every first Monday from six to um, seven. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Also, Jim, since I met Jim and his wife, we became the best of friends. I hope we continue. I want to tell you um, about a little bit, just a little bit about Round the Y. I was born and raised around here, right around on South Street in front of the railroad uh, tracks. And I guess the train was, my house and the train was about here, those first trees over there. Somebody used to ask me, say, well, you know, train coming, blowing, keeping all that noise and that close to the house. How do y'all conversate on the porch? We got used to it, you know. <laughs> Do any of the children ever get, get hurt in the railroad that close? Never, since I've been around here. And I've been around here all my life. Uh, when I went to, um, I was going to elementary school, we had to walk, there were no fence or anything to protect you from the tracks or anything. So we had to walk from around here to Little Raleigh, Holland School. By the time I got to high school, we uh, had buses. But nevertheless, I never did, and I, I, I love Rocky Mount, and I deeply love Around the Y. We was, we was a family, you know, everybody cared about each other. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna do some um, um, history searching to see uh, the graduate rate during that time, because, you know, a lot of guys and girls graduate from high school from around here. Um, and when Joyce was talking a while ago, I, I want you to, and I thought about it, I want you to um, think about if I ask you something about what's going on or anyone asks you or you sit on TV every now and then, you can tell me more about as a world terror than you can, um, young and restless than you can of what's really happened. You, your help is really needed for our people. I used to sub a lot and I subbed in the Edgecombe Middle School in um, Edgecombe County and there was these two black guys uh, sitting at a table and they had different books than the class did. And I asked them, why were they sitting there? And they said, because they couldn't use the other book because they hadn't learned their timetable. That's okay. Before I leave the day, you're gonna learn something on the timetable. But matter of fact, I told them, that I bet you can, um, you can um, rap a song word for word. And they can, three, four years old. But ne nevertheless, before I left that day, I told them to write down their timetables. Um, I started with three different numbers until they learned one at a time. Those guys knew that knew their timetables, and they could learn their timetable. They just needed, and you got to forget about. Well, they got a mom, they got a dad. Why don't they spend some time with it? But if you got time on your hand, I'm skipping around now. I'm talking too much. That made me upset. So when I came back, I thought about the fact we can get some volunteer teachers, or elderly person, to come to the Bassett Center. I got permission from the Bassett Center to start a tutoring program, one hour a day, 
once a week. We had so many kids to come that we didn't have enough adults to cover it. All they had to do was come for one hour now. We could sit and watch TV, five and six and eight hours, but we can't take the time. And you'll be surprised at the young elementary student that do not know how to write their numbers, recognize their numbers or alphabets. And by the time they get into elementary school, I noticed when I was subbing, those are the kids that's causing problems in school. You know, they, they don't know what the other, they didn't learn. And nobody took up time with them to make sure that they knew. And during that time, I think they would just pass from grade to grade, you know. So they end up dropping out. But our kids, our kids really, they need your help. And if you got one hour to spend at the Bassett Center to come down on a Thursday to help us out, I would really, really appreciate it. Okay. Joyce said, keep informed of what's going on. And if you want to know and nobody can tell you, just ask her, where do you go and who do you contact? And I'm not going to talk anymore because I say I talk too much. <laughs> Thank y'all. And I really, without calling anybody a particular name, I really appreciate y'all for taking, uh, thinking about enough of us around the Y, which is a wonderful community, to come out to this event. Thank you very, very much. Now we will have uh, Earl Manley from around the Y read the uh, City of Rocky Mount Proclamation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Proclamation of the City of Rocky Mount. Whereas the Lonia Spear Monk was born October the 10th, 1917, at 815 Green Street, also known as Red Row in the Around the Y community of Rocky Mount, Edgecombe County, the son of the Lonia Monk of Sampson County, whose parents Hinton and Sarah Monk lived near Newton Grove, and Barbara Batten Monk, whose parents Georgiana and Spear Monk hailed from east of of Tarboro, and whereas in 1922, Barbara Batts Monk and her three children, including young Thelonious, moved to New York City while, while Thelonious Sr. joined the family in New York, but returned after a few years and lived with his sister Eula at 124 Dunn Street in the Around the Y community. And here as in New York, the Lonious began playing piano as a teenager, touring the country for two years playing gospel music for an evangelist. Then after he returned to New York in 1941 and began his jazz career playing at Milton Playhouse, influenced by Duke Ellington and James P. Johnson, Monk developed his unique improv improvisational style. Monk was one of the most rec rec recorded jazz composers in the world with com compositions like Around Midnight and Crepuscule with Nelly and performed all over the world and is considered an originator of the bebop style of jazz and in 1964 was featured on the cover of Time magazine. And whereas Thelonious Monk never returned to Edgecombe County or around the Y community, but when he came to Raleigh to perform in 1970, he proudly said, I'm from Rocky Mount. He passed away in Inglewood, New Jersey in 1982, and in 2001, the city of Rocky Mount, in response to a petition from the around the Y community, renamed Dunn Street Park on South Washington Street as the Lonious S. Monk Park which is at his birth site, and in, 19, in 2012 dedicated a North Carolina historical highway marker for Monk and named the Traffic Island where the marker was placed at Main Street and East Thomas Street as Thelonious Monk Plaza. And whereas on October the 10th, 2017, people all over the world will join in celebration, celebrating the 100th birthday of jazz legend, legend and Rocky Mountain natives, Thelonious Monk. And 100th birthday celebration event are scheduled in Rocky Mount for October the 6th and 7th, 2017, 
sponsored by the Rocky Mount Edgecombe Community Development Corporation, the Phoenix Historical Society, the City of Rocky Mount, the Around the Wire Community, the North Carolina Arts Council, the North Carolina African American Heritage Commissioner, the African American Music Trails of Eastern North Carolina, the Twin Counties Young Professionals, the Smokehouse Restaurant, and Rocky Mount Mills. And whereas the City Council of Rocky <coughs> Mount desires to recognize its f famous native son on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Now, therefore, I, David W. Combs, Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, hereby proclaim October 6th through 10th, 2017 as Days of Thelonious Monk 100th Birthday Celebration in the City of Rocky Mount. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, to be affixed this 25th day of September in the year of 2017. The City of Rocky Mount, David W. Combs, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, next we have a real treat. A special poem written for this occasion by Mr. Darrell Stover. Well, good afternoon. good afternoon. I am honored to be here in this community amongst all uh, us fine folks. I am most especially honored to be in the presence of the Monk family and glad to have you all here and what I've witnessed from a distance a very fine fellow scholar who thank you for coming all the way from UCLA. The importance of this community within the context of celebrating Thelonious Fear Monk uh, is just that. It's a celebration of community, a community in which a monk and his family members were nurtured. And I think that more so than anything is what rings true with this celebration and the placement of this marker a celebration of a people, a celebration of a creative genius, a celebration of a musical tradition. And so on that note, let me share this with you. You got it, AKA Dig Monk. I got the monk, he got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk, I got the monk, he got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. Twisted shape shifter notes go over, under, and through the blues. Black equations, calculated scenarios, his fingers tap dancers, tuned to the train track clacks. Hit me back, monk. Rattle, tingle, rocky mount. Phase change, twirl, space, new time, new world, New York. I got the monk. He got the monk. She got the monk. We all got the monk. Here, my dear, Crepper School with Nelly, our time, magic, midnight round, strange sounds, bop abounds. I got the monk, she got the monk, he got the monk, we all got the monk. Well, you needn't, Delaware, no pity in that city. Make new relationships, love between brain, body, and piano, sound and dimension mathematical mission. I got the monk, he got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. Intellectual, friends, Rollins, Rouse, Train, Abdul Malik, Blakey and Haynes, Mary Lou, Max, Dizzy and Bird. Right then, brighter when, brighter now. Brilliant geniuses, getting it down. I got the monk. He got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. Say it, I got the monk. He got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. Come on, I got the monk. He got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. One more time, I got the monk. He got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. I got the monk, he got the monk, she got the monk, we all got the monk. I got the monk, he got the monk. Thank you very much, Daryl, and thank you for your contribution to this event in, more, in so many ways. You've been a, a big asset. 
Now, I would like to recognize the Monk family if they would stand. I know we have Monk family members here. Could you all stand, please? Thank you. I want to bring forward Pamela Monk Kelly, the Monk family historian from New Haven, Connecticut. She's been a lifelong school teacher, I believe, and have her own production company, Pam Productions and author of the, the book on their family history, All Roads Lead to Newton Grove. She was here with us uh, five years ago when we've had the uh, state marker, and we are uh, so glad she was here on her 100th birthday Amen. to represent the Monk families. Thank you, Pam. First, giving praises to God, who is the head of my life. Honor to the mayor in his absence, the city council members, Monk Council's executives, and other dignitaries and family members in attendance. I first would like to invite my siblings to come up front with me and stand here because we, um, we are one. We are one. So as I call their name, my brother Gary Monk, my sister Olivia Monk, my sister Edith Monk, my sister Jacqueline Monk, and our eldest brother, Conley Monk. I was honored when I was asked to represent the Monk family and speak as family historian and the author of All Roads Lead to Newton Grove, the Monk history, the history of the Monk family. All over the country, there are celebrations to commemorate our cousin, Thelonious, for his accomplishments. Even on today, in my hometown of New Haven, Connecticut, Thelonious III, son of Thelonious Jr., who is known to the public as T.S., but affectionately known to our family members as Toot, he is celebrating Thelonious Centennial with my sister at Yale University. He is performing in a concert to benefit the Hurricane Benef Relief Fund. We thank the citizens of Rocky Mount for marking the location of Thelonious' birth. The dictionary defines a marker as an object used to indicate a position, a place, or route. Thelonious Monk grew up surrounded by the bustle sound, bustling sounds of New York. He said, I have to listen to New York. I live there. I wasn't born there, but I've been living there all of my life. If you study his past, you will learn that music was in his DNA. His mother was Barbara Batts, and she and the father was Thelonious Sr. From the start, music bonded their family. The monks come from a strong gospel background where we sing and play instruments. Thelonious' grandparents played instruments, his parents played instruments, and many of us today still sing and play instruments. Needless to say, we are a musically inclined family. Allow me to paint a perfect picture of the birthplace of Thelonious. 124 Dunn Street, where Thelonious was born, was not just an ordinary house. It was a house that was owned by my grandparents, Theodore and Mamie Monk. The house had big yellow sunflowers and a fence surrounding the yard. On the side of the house, there was a large fig tree and water was drawn from the well in the backyard. There were three bedrooms and of course, there was a piano. Thelonious' father and aunts Eula and Hetty lived there. A long path led around the back. The street led to the variety store owned by Miss Meg, where you can buy the best dill pickles and large cookies for two cents. The railroad tracks were near and loud. My parents took over the ownership of 124 Dunn Street. The house was renovated and they added a bathroom. My two siblings, 
Olivia and my brother Conley were born there as well. And they lived in the house. And they are here with us today. Aunt Eula and Hetty were buried in the Unity Cemetery, one of the oldest African American cemeteries here in Rocky Mount. Unfortunately, the Monk Council was unable to locate their grave markers because of the condition of the cemetery. We're talking about making some changes. Our major effort is to see that we not only maintain an outstanding family, but that we continue to make improvements where necessary. From a historical and family perspective, our last name could have been Cole instead of Monk. Records indicated that our grandfather Hinton used the last name of Cole until he married Sarah Williams. Then he used the last name of Monk and passed it on to, his, to Uncle Thelonious and the rest of the nine children. Family members mentioned that he used the na two names interchangeably. Being a grandson of a former slave and self-taught by watching his sister take piano lessons, Thelonious was an icon in our family. He faced racism and oppression, but he was an overcomer. He represented stardom, musical innovation, and genius. Thelonious quoted, whatever you think can't be done, Somebody will come along and do it. A genius is one most like himself. These words play out just like the music in our family. He found inner peace and happiness through his music and dancing. He stated, I've always believed in my being myself. Delonis was so creative that he designed a ring with the sayings he coined, Monk, no, where no Monk is no in reverse. Growing up, we all knew he was a star. When he appeared on the Time Magazine, my dad, Conley F. Monk Sr., was Thelonious' first cousin. Their fathers were brothers, the sons of Henning Cole Monk and Sarah Monk. He had a copy of the Time Magazine, which Thelonious was on the cover page. In 1964, Thelonious became one of five jazz musicians to ever be on the cover of Time Magazine. I feel confident enough to say that he was the only one from this great city of Rocky Mount. In the 1960s, my parents traveled to North Carolina to visit Uncle Thelonious. He was declining in health and was hospitalized at that time. I was a small toddler, and he reached out to me. Although I can't remember that day, I do remember my parents telling me he bounced me on his knees. Though through the, that blessing of just one bounce, one thing remains unchanged. Our happiness will always be our greatest treasure. We know now that the truth, the true miracle lies in one simple truth. Thelonious success is our ancestors' dream. Thelonious Monk, the euphonious one, was Thelonious Sr.'s middle son. He played the piano in a jazzy bebop way, wore different hats on different days. In conclusion, in the spirit of Thelonious Monk, we celebrate his 100th birthday today here in Rocky Mount with you. Because of his love for music, a unique sound was created. Because of him, his legacy and music will continue to be heard through many generations to come. Because of his greatness, our family stands on shoulders of giants like him and our cousin, Super Bowl famer, Super Bowl famer Art Monk. From the echoes of Newton Grove, to the far corners of the country. Cousin Thelonious is being celebrated for his accomplishments and his gift to the world. I wasn't present at Thelonious' birth, but I was present at his funeral. And 35 years later, I am so excited to say here in Rocky Mount, I am here at Thelonious Centennial 
And the beat goes on. Thank you very much, Pam, for those wonderful, informative remarks. And as we say, they're, they're celebrating Monk's birthday all over. And we're just so glad that you could be here in Rocky Mount, where he was born. <laughs> right here, and it's where we st stand. Now let me uh, bring forward... Uh, We've been talking about this for a long while, <laughs> you know, and it's so good that uh, everything uh, it, uh, that Dr. Robin D.G. Kelly is able to be with us here today. He wasn't able to be here five years ago, but he sent some remarks, but uh, he was able to be here today on his birthday. He is uh, the Gary B. Nash Professor of American History at UCLA. He was formerly at University of Southern California, Columbia University, New York University, and several other places. We got a long resume. <laughs> uh, I first learned about Robin Kelly when I read his book, Hammer and Hope, and uh, which uh, has a good connection to Alabama, the same way that the work we're doing with the tobacco workers here in North Carolina in the 40s was connected in some ways to that uh, outgrowth of the work in, that he studied in Alabama. He also wrote uh, Race Rebels, and also uh, Freedom Dreams. But he's very, but he, this uh, book he did on Thelonious Monk, well acclaimed book, and not only does he know history, he plays the piano. <laughs> so that's, he's, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are very honored here today to, to bring forward one of the most foremost historians in the country, Dr. Robin Kelly. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I have to say, first of all, before I say anything, happy birthday, Thelonious. Um, it's next week, 100 years. And then secondly, before I say anything and make acknowledgments, I, it's just so, it was so heartening to see the Monk family up here. Um, you have to understand, and if you, if you read my book, you'd know this, that there would be no book without the family. That the stories that they shared, like this, the, the Connecticut group, the New York, everyone, the stories they shared really made this a book. One of the problems with the way we often write our history of great artists is that we assume that artists operate in isolation. They have no connection to anything but making art. And I have to say, um, uh, Pam's presentation, which is just brilliant, just lays out exactly who the man is. In fact, I have to throw out, I had two versions of a talk. One was about North Carolina. I took all that stuff out. So now I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff now. Because um, you did it. But it's but just extraordinary stories. And you know, it's so funny, because I have jazz critics and journalists who criticize the book because they feel like I take detours. Detours to talk about um, the legacy of the struggle for freedom, for example, in Reconstruction. Detours to talk about the uh, impact that the insane asylum in North Carolina had on Thelonious Monk Sr. Detours to talk about what it meant to struggle and make a living and to fall in love and have children and be a parent, you know, to be a father or a son. And that is the story. Because you can't make art unless you actually are connected to people. So when I forget to, Daryl, when Daryl said this is about community, this really is about community. So I want to thank the Monk family. I want to thank Pam for all of her work. I want to thank the Phoenix Historical Society, the African American History of uh, Edgecombe County, the City of Rocky Mount, the Rocky Mount Edgecombe Community Development Corporation, the City Council, everyone involved in this. Because um, this is a long time coming. I, I regret not being here in 2012, but I'm here today. And it's, you know, what we're witnessing is it seems like the whole world in 2017 is recognizing Thelonious Monk as one of the greatest composers and pianists um, in the 20th century. And you know, as we can imagine, it took a while for North Carolina, the state of North Carolina, to catch up. And we have to remember that. That's not uncommon. But we're here now. And it's time uh, that Monk is recognized for his roots here. Uh, and it's something we can all be proud of. Um, we should remember that Monk's fame kind of ebbed and flowed. Like in the 40s and 50s, he could barely make a living. 
you know, his wife, Nellie, worked, and that's how they got made at ends meet. He was attacked by critics who could not understand his advanced conception of harmony. Um, and then he blows up in the late 50s and 60s. As uh, Pam mentioned, he graces the cover of Time magazine in 1964. He's larger than life. But then upon his death, he shrinks. Some of you may not remember this. He sort of disappeared from history for a moment, momentarily, then reemerged as a giant in sort of mythical proportions. Uh, he's larger than ever now. And it's no wonder that Thelonious Monk's uh, 100th birthday is probably the most anticipated celebration of any jazz artist since Duke Ellington in 1999. Fame, however, could be a mixed blessing. And I just this is my little warning, especially for Monk, whose whole life is shrouded in myth. Part of writing the book and part of connecting to family is to get away from all the stories and myths that people circulate about him. Um, they, his eccentricities, his weirdness. Uh, we, part of that has to do with the fact we lack an adequate language to talk about his music, so we turn to his personality. Um, and I tried to peel back all those lies and exaggerations to reveal the musician, the composer, the student, the worker, the son, the husband, father, the friend, the patient, and a black man in a volatile and changing world. On the other hand, Monk's statu status is, as a major composer is indisputable. You go to any university today that has a music program, and they teach Monk's music. Go to Library of Congress. They added brilliant corners in this national recording registry. Um, he attained the status of repertory. It's all these bands from Jazz at Lincoln Center all the way down are playing Monk's work as repertory in the same way they play Beethoven or Bach. Um, consequently, Monk's recordings of his compositions since his death vastly outnumber those that were made during his, his lifetime. Um, and we think about all those tunes that he left behind that become standards. You know, Ask Me Now, Rhythm and Name, Monk's Mood, Monk's Dream, Thelonious, Ruby My Dear, Crisscross, Cross, Baya, Blue Monk, Straight No Chaser, Mysterioso, Evidence, Epistrophe, Off Minor, Panonica, right? Well You Needn't, and of course, Round Midnight. No jazz musician in her right mind can play this music without knowing those tunes. You can't go to a jam session and they call those tunes, you don't know them. So they become standards. And he didn't write a lot of songs, but the percentage of his songs that really have have entered the repertory is just huge. So just to conclude, because I want to be short here, as I wrote in my book, for all the accolades and formal recognition, for all the efforts to canonize Monk, you know, that is turn him into a museum piece, and to place his bust on the mantle alongside Bach and Beethoven, we have to remember that Monk essentially was a rebel. He was a rebel. To know the man and his music requires digging Monk out of the golden dustbins of posterity, out of the protected selves of the museum, and restoring him to the tradition of sonic disturbance that forced the entire world to take notice. You know? And I would argue to, to situate him in the earth, on the ground, as a human being. You know? He broke rules. He created a body of work and a sound that no one, no one has been able to duplicate. And if I've learned anything from this whole adventure of writing this book, it's that duplicating Monk's sound was never the point of his music. He never told anyone to play like him. He always says, play yourself. And this is a philosophical lesson here. He says, play yourself. Play yourself lay at the core of Monk's, Monk's philosophy. He understood it as art's universal injunction. He demanded originality in others. He embodied it in everything he did in his piano technique, in his dress, in the hats he wore, in his language, in his humor, in the way he danced, in the way he loved his family, in the way he raised his children, and above all, in his compositions. Original didn't mean being different just for the, for the heck of it. It meant, for Monk, reaching higher than one's limits, striving for something startling and memorable, and never being afraid to make mistakes. Originality is not always mastery, nor does it yield success. It's really hard work. So our lesson, and that's why I really appreciate the discussion about the youth, is that this is Monk's greatest legacy and the greatest lesson that all the kids in Rocky Mount who, you know, who play in this park ought to know. That generation of future leaders and future artists who not only come out of Rocky Mount, but everywhere on the planet. That is, play yourself. Be yourself. Strive for something beyond you beyond what you think you're capable of. And this is not just for kids. 
we have to all learn how to be bold, to break with, tra with tradition, and to make decisions that may be difficult decisions to make, because that's the only way to move forward. And for that, um, Monk has been my guide to life, and I hope it will, he'll be your guide as well, because there's a lot of lessons there. And for all of you who showed up here, welcome. Thank you for being here for Monk. And don't ever forget that this is not the end. This is the, be the beginning, I hope. Thank you. Now, um, Phoenix Historical Society have been involved with a number of uh, markers with the North Carolina Highway Historical Marker Advisory Committee. This is our first marker with the City of Rocky Mount. We're going to see Rocky Mount and uh, Andre Knight, District 1 uh, Councilman, has been the one in charge of city historical markers. That quite a several have been put up, especially to honor Afro Americans in Rocky Mount. And he's the, uh, the uh, we thank Andre and thank the City of Rocky Mount for uh, pursuing the uh, a marker here. I think you promised it here when maybe five some years ago we had a gathering here and we said one day we'd, we'd do something like this. So, Andre Knight. Thank you. Rubens told me to be very short. <laughs> Lamont said two minutes, he said one minute. And I got a three page paper, but I'm not going to read it. But I'm Andre Knight, and I serve as a member of the Rocky Mountain City Council. I'd just like to begin my remarks with a quote that a lot of us use during public speaking. If you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat your history. Today, as we celebrate the great Thelodious Monk, it's a great history lesson to all of us. And there's a book that we had to read, and it was part of our curriculum at North Carolina Central University. And the book was written by John Hope Franklin from slavery to freedom. And this occasion has uplifted so many people that we can be whatever we choose to be. Uh, I've been on the council almost 14 years, I think Reuben 17 and, and Lamont 20. But it was, it was a long period of time that the history of African Americans, the souls of black folks, were not recorded or documented in Edgecombe County and throughout the Twin Counties. And it was with the late Rudolph Knight and now the, uh, with the uh, Phoenix uh, Historical Societies and many others that we are able to document our heroes that live among us here in Rocky Mount and the Twin County areas. Uh, just to note that a few markers that we have erected locally, and I couldn't have done it alone. It was with Lamont and Reuben and Lois and uh, other council members. Uh, one is the uh, late F.C. Barnes, the gospel music legend, uh, Helen P. Gay, that we named the historic train station in her honor. Dr. Douglas, we uh, erected a marker where his home used to stand across from the historic St. James Baptist Church. Anna Easter Brown, which one of the founders of uh, the AKAs, one of the oldest sororities uh, in this nation. And the uh, Lincoln Park uh, marker, which was the first subdivision for planned subdivision for African Americans uh, uh, to live. Also, the late uh, George Dudley, uh, the first African American council member after Reconstruction. And we also have a local marker for, the book, for Buck Leonard, who was inducted in the Negro um, uh, Home of Fame for baseball. So I just want to say that uh, today we are honored uh, to make this our seventh marker, along with the Phoenix Society, Historical Society to erect this marker in honor of Thelodious Monk. And I just want to say to the community, uh, the city of Rocky Mount, and to his family, we are very uh, uh, excited. And we hope that, not hope, but we know that this is the beginning for bigger things to come. And as uh, the young man just stated, I got the monk. You got the monk. We all got the monk. Let's take that beat and carry it on, and let's do, high, uh, let's do greater and higher things. Again, thank you for coming out and supporting this event. God bless you. Now, uh, we also uh, could have got this done with help uh, from uh, our uh, speaker for the closing remarks. Joseph Bo Cook is a historical uh, 
preservation planner for the city of Rocky Mount, and also a member of the Phoenix Historic Society. And uh, he want he want to close us out. Good afternoon. Uh, as Jim mentioned, uh, my name is Joseph Bocook. Uh, I work with the city of Rocky Mount and their Department of Planning and Development. I'm also a member of the Phoenix Historical Society and a native of Edgecombe County. Uh, I am from Rocky Mount, I suppose. Uh, I'm grateful to have been included on the uh, program uh, with these great leaders and orators that have preceded me today um, for this event that's brought us together to honor the origins, contributions, and, and legacy of the globally renowned Thelonious Spirit Monk. Uh, my remarks will be brief. Um, I'd like to start by thanking all of the sponsors and organizers of today's events. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, Rocky Mount Edgecombe Community Development Corporation and Mrs. Dickens uh, for her continued um, pursuit of broadening the, the reach of Monk here in Rocky Mount with the um, jazz series that she does annually and all the other contributions that her organization does in this community. Um, the North Carolina Arts Council, uh, the North Carolina African Heritage Commission, uh, the African American Music Trails, the Around the Wild community, Miss Ruth, Ruth uh, Bullard, uh, Mr. Stover, uh, the Twin Counties Young Professionals, uh, Prime Smokehouse, and Rocky Mount Mills. And lastly, uh, the, the Phoenix Historical Society. Um, it's a personal touch, um, Jim, Jim is my uncle, and uh, he's relentless in his pursuit of bringing history of this community forth to, to the people. I can't tell you how many times he called me to make sure this event happened today, to make sure that we got a marker in place in this park for Thelonious Monk. And it started about five years ago <laughs> after the 95th uh, birthday celebration. So uh, let's, let's give Jim a, a round of applause if you can. Without further ado, I think if we all can stand and, and we will, uh, and, uh, if the Round the Y community and any members of the Monk family will. Ruth, can you lead us to the uh, marker? And Reverend Hines, at that point, after we unveil the marker, Reverend Hines will give the benediction, and we will be dismissed. And uh, see everybody up at D uh, Douglas Block at the Booker Teeth for the rest of the occasion. to be here to unveil this Rocky Mountain City historical marker to Thelonious Sphere Monk here at his birthplace. If you see the, the marker on Thomas Street, it says, in Washington Street, it says, born one mile south. So if you go down Washington Street one mile, you should see this marker. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who are out of town people, trying to find their way around uh, Rocky Mount. This is now helpful for the place, his birthplace. And this sort of goes in tandem with the Round the Y community marker. 
and uh, hopefully is an asset to the community. Ruth, and I won't let you say something for, this is the, for the community. Because a, because a monk uh, birthplace, Rocky Mount, uh, around the Y is on the map. Okay, y'all want to, uh, where's Mr. Powell? Mr. Powell. You help. Want to get a part of this? Where would you pull it down? Well, it'd be kind of hard to do since I got a lap over the top. Yeah, Paul, man, you can get it. There you go. Take the cane. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you.